Okay, hit it. First slide. Okay, this is called uh, Who Benefits from Alarmism? I'm This is a 30-minute presentation, and I'm going to give it in 12 minutes. So <laughs> buckle your seatbelts. All right, first thing, and the clicker is this little doodad. Is that right, my friend? Hey, look at that. It worked. Okay, uh, I used to be a producer of these things, so you know I always look. Uh, money lust. Well, of course. Who are the usual suspects that we think of that benefit from alarmism? Climate scientists, of course. Federal bureaucrats, government grant seekers, academia, big green, rent-seeking corporations, wind, solar, anything that you can get money. And there's oddballs not looking for money. They, I call, struggle junkies. Uh, they live from one protest to another, and we'll talk about them because they're part of the dark benefit. Federal funding, however, is not dark money. If you take a look at almost any grant you want is sitting up on usaspending.gov or on the actual agency's grant awards database. So we're not even going to think about that because you can find that at your leisure. Just get your Google out. Now, sample agency spending for 2000 to 2012, you can read those numbers, but you get the idea. It's a lot. Now, this is for all environmental things and all whatever else they were happened to be doing. But believe me, a lot of that went to uh, green groups. Now, Big Green, the environmental groups, their revenues are also not dark money. If you're familiar with the website called GuideStar, Form 990 is available. That's their annual IRS report. Get the idea that uh, they make a lot. Grants that came to the top 15 green groups, and their names are all up there, whether you can read them or not. You can, this is archived, so you can get it later on the web. Uh, $2.5 billion, just the top 15 in 2012. You get the idea. Where's the real money then? It comes, the dark money comes from well, uh, actually, I really need, need to tell you about this. Nonprofits don't have to tell you where their money comes from. They have to tell you how much it was. But Privacy Act says that that is dark money by law. Where's the real power then? It comes from private foundations. Private foundations are the like the Ford Foundation, Rockefeller Foundation, anything with somebody's name on it. Uh, just to give you an idea, the top 100 private foundations, and there are over uh, about uh, 40,000 of them, and um, in this year, they have total assets of the top 100 of $222 billion. That's a lot. What's a foundation? It's a nonprofit trust. It's usually created by wealthy individuals usually with a gift of stock that, by law, has to be converted to a diversified portfolio. Grants are paid from the dividends and capital gains of that portfolio, and the public cannot donate to a private foundation. Uh, these are generally people very wealthy. Uh, they simply want to rule the world. Money does that to you, um, whether that's uh, the conspiracy theory type or not. OK, now foundations set the environmental agenda for the world by deciding who gets the money. Mm. They do that with prescriptive grants. You may not know what that is. What it is, it's by invitation only. They ask environmental groups to come do things. They have programs that are designed by in-house people at the foundations. The grants come with instructions. You are required, if to get the money, to promise deliverables, things that you will do. And performance is mandatory, or you will never see another penny of uh, foundation money. Typical foundation green grants, if you take a look at the, the last uh, decade or so, back to 2000, you'll find $81 billion is traceable to foundation green grants. Uh, a couple of years ago, the last survey said there's 26,500 U.S. environmental groups, but 
under 100 of those get over 90% of all of the grant money from foundations. How do you find this dark money then? I'm forgetting to click, but that's too bad. You can go back and look at your own leisure. This is going to be archived, remember? I told you it's going to pass. Okay, so finding dark money, how do you do that? Well, if you uh, want to find the green group's income, where it came from, you've got to use specialized databases. There happens to be a free one, the only one there is, Citizen Audit on the Washington Examiner's online website. I use paid, paid databases. Uh, I have Foundation Center and Foundation Search. They're very expensive. Use, uh, usual. There's no reason for you to do that. I'll do that. Network power is where foundations are really good. They have a strategy. Whenever they have a program, they don't just give one group that program. They give grants to a legal one, a media one, an outreach one, a technical one, a good lobbying one, however many it takes, whatever that issue is, they will give money to all of those groups, and sometimes they don't even know each other. Networks are the secret of power because they work together, and there's lots of them, and they're all doing the same thing. And that means for my purposes, in order to know what's really going on, because I consult to a lot of people who are being attacked, you need to understand network analysis technology. That's a lot of software that you really don't want to know how it works, but it does things like tells you cultural domain analysis. Uh, it's got software called UCNet. That's a cheap one. Uh, in fact, it's free, and a thing called NetDraw. And what does it draw? It draws you a road map of who's kicking you. That that you see there is a very simple diagram of one campaign, and it's a little one. That's not even all of it. It was in New Mexico, Marita. This is no dog. You remember that one? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the only reason that uh, I did that one is because it would fit in two pages of my book, Freezing in the Dark. Now, this book I got by interviewing leftists. I know more leftists than more leftists. They were very good telling me exactly what they were doing. Okay. Uh, you can also, I just by coincidence happened to have a carton of these for 15 bucks a throw. You can buy them for 23 bucks on Amazon, so talk to me later. Okay. The largest networking center is now the Environmental Grant Makers Association, the EGA, that's about 200 and something foundations. They make strategy every year. It's about six billion and a half dollars this year that they're combining, and that's what they're all going to find out who's doing what, and they will give that money to whoever they want. Now, I found out about these guys, oh, 20 years ago. 1992, I happened to lead a protest demonstration against their annual retreat where they were making all of these plans. And it just so happened, I not only put them on that website, undoinfluence.com, but I obtained 24 tapes of their key meeting. And you can find all about carbon taxes if you, uh, now I transcribed those tapes, or at least seven of them, and posted them. Go read them. You want some really, uh, to see what they were doing in 1992? And I'm done now. All right, summary is do not underestimate the power of dark money, just to tell you a little something. Of the eight sponsors of the 1988 Villach meetings leading to, that's in Austria, uh, to the creation of the IPCC, Sonia knows all about that, uh, half of those were EGA members. Think about that. That's 1985, 1988 when they actually put it together. Okay, now we need to go to the dark benefit. What's in it for alarmists that we don't know? In the 1950s, clinical psychologist Abraham Maslow did something unusual for psychologists. He studied normal people. He published, that's supposed to laugh line. Okay. He, <clears throat> he published his findings in 1954. He studied what makes us tick. He wrote that normal people strive to satisfy their needs pretty much the same uh, from person to person and in somewhat the same order. Now, he called that latter uh, the needs hierarchy, and that's the key to understanding a lot. Now, he knew that people uh, have 
basic needs, and those basic needs are all material, like food, shelter, uh, safety from harm, uh, and a means to live. But he asked, what happens when those needs are satisfied? He discovered that needs spread outward. The need for love, the need for a sense of belonging, the need for social recognition, and the need for personal accomplishment. That's what he wrote in 1954. He quit there. That's what most people think that all of the needs hierarchy is not. And that is because Maslow He, and when he got to 1960s, he discovered that he hadn't gone far enough. He's, uh, he found that as people go up that needs hierarchy, if they get all the way up to that last one, that their, uh, their needs begin to be non-material, that they need knowledge, and they need to understand, like scientists. And then finally, if they're fortunate enough, the need for inspiration and beauty, religion, art. But there's a problem. Some of these people, okay, <clears throat> and they begin to take the lower needs for granted, and they begin to be very subject to cognitive changes. They forget about the lower rungs. Maslow wrote, we tend to take for granted the blessings we already have, the food, security, and so on. These blessings tend not only to be unnoticed, but even to be devalued, mocked, and destroyed. He concluded, this neglected pathology, I didn't make this jargon up, he did. Post-gratification, forgetting, and devaluation, in my opinion, is very great potential importance and power. He unfortunately died in 1970 when his second edition was published, so he didn't know how good his prophecy was. The pathological need to devalue, to mock, and destroy basic needs is the basis of alarmism. That's what you're looking at in everything you see these alarmists do. Alarmism gratifies a pathological need, and that gratification is the dark benefit. Now you know what's really going on. Beach it. Twelve minutes. <laughs>